morning. My name is Tom Hargrove. Uh, I'm an attorney. I am licensed to practice in the states of Illinois and Indiana. Um, Sean asked me to speak on this topic uh, late summer this year, and um, as we neared the event, I changed my perspective and my purpose a little bit. Um, and I think you're going to hear a lot of things that you've already heard from other people. Can you speak up just a little, a little bit? Yeah, I'll probably hold it closer to your mouth. Okay, is that better? Yeah. Okay. So I want to give you a little bit of my background, which is a little, is somewhat unique. Everybody in here has a unique background, came here from different paths and different reasons. I first became exposed to insurance when I was in college. I took a couple insurance classes, and I really enjoyed it. Um, got out of college, really didn't have a strong direction in my life. Uh, within a year and a half, I'd had a couple jobs that didn't appeal to me and didn't work out very well. And in 1980, I ended up as an insurance adjuster here in the Chicago area, a field adjuster. So um, the primary reason I took the job at that point, I really knew nothing about it, was that they were going to give me a company car. And my car wasn't doing real well. And uh, I was going to get paid and reduce expenses. So I, I thought it was going to be a good gig for a couple years. I've uh, been doing it ever since. So I was a field adjuster for 10 years in the Chicago area, um, handling first anything that came into my territory, and ultimately I just worked on property claims in uh, northern Illinois, Indiana, uh, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. In uh, 1990, a friend of mine reached out to me, and he said, um, we've got an opening here at our home office of this large insurance company, and you've got the skill set we're looking for. Would you come in and talk to us? So I ended up uh, working in the home office claims department, handling strictly property claims for the next four and a half years. And uh, I oversaw 25% of the company, country, for the claims, property claims. Anything from a storm door to a burned up high rise. So the other things I did during that time uh, was I was involved in training uh, SIU people, claim people, agents on how to handle claims. Um, I was also involved, I was the company liaison to the people who drafted new policies and put policy packages together. So I've been involved in that as well. During that time I was going to law school and um, in 94, I started practicing for insurance companies. I was the Thompson Co., those types of people that defended companies, again, doing property insurance claims primarily. In 2001, uh, it just got to the point that I just couldn't stand representing them anymore. Um, their policies and procedures and attitudes towards the policyholders were something I just couldn't deal with anymore, and I left. Since that time, um, I moved out to the suburbs, and when I do insurance, I do some other things. I do a lot of construction law as well. Um, I've represented policyholders. I represent them in premium audits. I represent them in coverage problems, and I represent them in claims. So um, I have seen thousands and thousands of claim files, both as an adverse party, as an auditor, and as a participant. And what I'm going to talk about today are things that I've seen and some things I think you guys can do to make your lives easier. All right. What are our goals in the event of a loss? Well, this may have been a little misleading because every policy has a section in it called duties in the event of loss or something similar. But as professionals who are representing the policy holders, we also have duties. Okay, one of them is to obtain a fair and reasonable settlement from the insurer following an insured event. Do it promptly for the least amount of trouble and aggravation. Okay, and in order to do this, you need to know, you guys need to know what the coverage is. And I have seen it over and over and over again where the public adjuster or the contractor or the company insurance rep doesn't know what the coverage is, okay? And they flop around for months arguing or going down the wrong road when they don't know what's insured and what isn't. 
and how to pay for it if it is damaged. Okay? This was touched on yesterday. I'm going to try to not spend too much time on it. If you approach, um, if you approach the insurance claim in a less confrontational manner early on, you can get the claims resolved. When I was on the street here in Chicago, there were plenty of public adjusters. Um, most of the losses that PAs worked on at that time were fires or significant water losses. Um, water losses are a huge part of the claims in the Chicago area because of the weather. Um, you could count on them to come in with an estimate that was two or three times what was reasonable um, and, and hoping that you wouldn't catch all the puff that they've packed into it. It created a contentious relationship and it slowed down claim handling. Um, if you guys can approach these claims with a reasonable estimate that's gonna just what it takes to get the job done and educate the adjuster as to why you're asking for these things, you can make it easy to get your claim paid. Who are we working with? Well, as was mentioned earlier, we're working with an insured who has little or no idea what's going to happen. Okay? It's your obligation, I think, to explain what you're going to do for them, but don't tell them more than what you can do for them. Okay? Um, none of us can predict the future. If I knew what the future was, I'd be on a desert, I'd be on a beach somewhere in the Caribbean, right? So, um, so they have no idea what's going to happen. Then we have an adjuster who is your contact, your point of representative. And what I have seen in the past 15 to 20 years is a significant deterioration in the training that's given to adjusters about how to be an adjuster. Okay? Um, we, we get claim files and we see people who don't have any idea what they're doing. Okay? You can help with that. All right? You've seen more roofs than they have. And if you don't go in there in a contentious manner off the, back, off the bat, you can get these claims settled. They're poorly trained. They're not familiar with the situation. We've talked about people going out to look at their first commercial roof. Um, in a storm situation, they send adjusters to the storm, light, storm site um, who've never been there. I remember the first storm I got sent to was in Southern California. Um, that was the first time I ever saw a wood shingled roof. We just don't have them around here to speak of, or we didn't back in the 80s. Um, then I got sent to Las Vegas in 88 following an explosion, and that was the first time I saw a textured drywall inside a house. Never seen it before. Had no idea how to fix it, how to repair it, what it was. Okay. I had spent a couple days figuring out what I was looking at before I could start adjusting claims. So, um, you. They don't train these people. They, they don't have the time. They don't have the experience. Um, and it's money. They're poorly trained. They're not very good at interpersonal relationships. They're overworked. Um, most of them don't understand insurance coverage, especially commercial insurance. Especially commercial insurance. They don't know what they're doing. Um, policy extensions. Everybody's busy looking at the main policy forms. Nobody looks at the amendatory endorsements that often provide additional coverage. They don't know what the exclusions and limitations are. They know what they are in the homeowner, and they think, oh, well, that also applies to this. It doesn't. Uh, they don't know how to recognize damage. Sometimes it's they don't want to. Sometimes they just don't know. Um, and most of all, they don't know anything about construction. Do you know, does anybody know anybody who grew up wanting to be an insurance adjuster? I didn't, okay. In fact, when I told my dad um, what I was going to do, he said, you know, your grandfather did that for a while. I had no idea. He says, I can't believe you're doing this. <laughs> so he was a car dealer, and he hated him because of dealing with the body shops. Okay. Another thing that I don't think a lot of you guys understand is the culture inside of a claim office, and I want to give you a little insight about that. Adjusters are socially judged, and sometimes HR judges them, on whether they've been 
made fun of, they've been, somebody's pulled the wool over their eyes, they get an attitude of easy, we call people like that easy money, okay? And we do that in a derogatory way. Um, hey, pay a claim, make a friend, right? Uh, stuff like that. Then there's another faction of people who get a sick and sadistic pleasure out of denying claims. Um, first company I worked at, we had a guy named uh, Fred who, um, we either called him Freddie Sunshine because he wasn't, or we called him Freddie Denial because that's what he loved to do. Before he became an insurance adjuster, uh, Fred had worked uh, in the military, risen to the rank of captain, and you know what his job was? He's the guy that pushed the button at the bottom of the silo to launch the nuclear missiles. Okay, so this guy had an interesting perspective on life, and um, if he could figure out a way to deny a claim, he did. Fortunately for our policyholders, when you denied a claim, it had to go through management, and they shut him down, but he worked real hard to deny claims. For insurance, comp for insurance adjusters, too, the money gets a little weird, okay? When I worked for the large metropolitan insurance company, we wrote enormous checks on commercial buildings, okay? One of the cases I worked on was, um, it was the glass plant at Ford Motor Company in Dearborn that made all their windshields. Um, it exploded, okay? That cost a lot of money to fix. And it just doesn't become money anymore. It gets weird. Um, I think the way to work with it when you're working with these people is try to humanize it. You guys and not paying this claim or slowing it down or screwing up these people's lives, okay? Why do you think you have a right to do that? So what we, we used to talk, we used to say the first thing you have to do when you get a new claim is adjust the policyholder before you adjust the claim. And I think what we need to do is adjust the adjuster before you start adjusting the loss. Um, Non-confrontive, -conf non non-threatening, work together to resolve the claim. And this was said yesterday, every insurance company I've been associated with says the best claim is a closed claim. They want to close these things. Okay, but they don't want to be taken advantage of. Uh, make your claim easy to adjust and pay and it will get paid. <coughs> a friend of mine had a fire a few years ago, bad fire. And um, I worked with him, showed him how to put his personal property claim together. It was $349,000 of destroyed personal property in his house. Guess how long it took for that claim to get paid? Anybody? Three days, okay? If you put the claim together in a manner that the insurance company recognizes and they're familiar with, okay, and they can go right down through it, all right, they pay the claims. Um, about six months later, I saw him and he's, he's on a new Harley. And I said, Russ, I said, Russ, where did you get that Harley? And he said, my closet. Okay, duties in the event of a loss. This is what I think Sean wanted me to talk about, but this is what it says in the policy. Every single insurance policy there is has a clause in it that are instructions and requirements for the policyholder. You need to know what it is. Okay, the current version of these things originated in the 1943 New York Standard Fire Policy. Is anybody familiar with that? Okay. Um, in Illinois, that is still the standard by which insurance policies are measured by the insurance department. If your policy doesn't provide coverage equal to or greater than that in any area, it reverts back to the coverage provided there. Okay, these policies, they have different nomenclature, but it says it's, it's the same thing. Duties after loss, that's a, these are all in the conditions section of, the, of a property policy. Duties after loss, that's what's in an ISO homeowner's form. Duties in the event of loss or damage, that's in the ISO commercial. What you must do in case of loss, American family. Your duties after loss, homeowners, state farm. Requirements in case of loss, that's in the national flood insurance policy. Don't assume that all policies from the same carrier are the same, they are not. If you are licensed or operate in multiple jurisdictions, the policy that you see here is going to be different 
in the policy you see in a different state, okay? Because the contents of the policies are governed by state law and you need to know what the coverage is. People have mentioned, ask for a certified copy of the policy, do it, do it, do it. Or you don't know what you're doing and you can end up going down a rabbit hole. Okay, I think one of your duties is to know what the policy provides and what the policy requires. If you don't know, find out. Don't rely on the policy that you have from the same insurer, which is in your files from a loss that occurred two years ago. They are updated constantly and they change. ISO updates policies every year, maybe not every form, but they're doing it all the time. Does everybody know who ISO is? Okay. State Farm updates less often, but the policies vary from state to state. Let me step back here for ISO policies for a minute. ISO policies are predominantly national policies. It's one policy form they issue that's used all over the country. In the case of that, your policy is going to have a state-specific amendatory endorsement that's attached to it that can wildly change the policy terms contained within the policy. If you don't find out what that is, you can make a bad mistake, like wait too long to file suit, wait too long to file a proof of loss. You have to know what you're dealing with. Um, this is what the ISO homeowners policy says. Interestingly enough, this one says there's a requirement for prejudice, okay? That's not true in all states or all their policies. In Illinois, all they have to show is you didn't comply, not that there's been prejudice, okay? If the failure is prejudicial and it's got to be performed either by you, meaning the insured, or another person who qualifies as an insured, or a representative, and that's you guys, okay? And if it doesn't get done, the insurer is going to say they're prejudiced. They always do. Why? Because that's what their attorneys teach them to say. How do I know? I used to do it. Okay? Duties in the event of loss. Okay, this is a commercial, interestingly enough, big, far more complicated policy, far fewer requirements. Um, this NFIP says in case of a flood loss, you must. They're not quite as nice. Uh, State Farm, you must cooperate with us, okay, in the investigation and see that the following duties are performed. Some insurance companies, adjusters who don't know the coverage say the insured has to do this. No, they must see that it's done. They don't have to do it, okay? You got to know what the policy says. In the event of a, it should say event. I did that so you guys could proofread, test your, test your proofread this morning. In the event of a loss, blah, 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 you and any other person must, okay? It's American family. Uh, a lot of their claims seem to wind up on my desk. I'm not saying anything bad about them. I could, but I'm not going to. Um, the insured probably doesn't know what to do and doesn't want to do it even if they knew what to do. If you want the claim to get paid, you're going to have to do these things. Okay? And if you want to get paid, it's got to get done because all the money comes from the, the insurance company. Um, number one, here's, you have to give prompt notice to us or our agent. Some of them, some of them have uh, online sites you do it. Some of them calls phone. Some of them you have to call the agent. Okay? If you do it by telephone, send a confirming email. All right? Who has one of these on them? Cell phone? Takes pictures? Does email? Does a text? Okay, you've got everything you need. If you're uncomfortable with doing it on your phone, invest in Dragon. Okay, I use it on my computer. I absolutely love it. Um, it comes with a free th a thing called Dragon Anywhere that goes on your phone. You can dictate emails, letters, anything you want while you're driving down the road, and it does a very nice job. So if you have a conversation with an adjuster, an insurance agent, somebody else, confirm it. Okay? They have a different narrative that they're trying to sell in their, in their claim files. Okay? Do it at that time. Don't wait six months, because then it looks like you're making something up to cover a hole. Bob, 
uh, following up our conversation today, you agreed that you would have your uh, agreed, the agreed scope to us by X date, that type of thing. Um, we, we, we've got a case we're working on right now where the adjuster told me, uh, the insurance company told me if we did X, they'd pay the claim, and then they didn't pay the claim. Thought, oh, well, that should be pretty easy, okay? So I looked through all the claim file materials. I called them up. I said, where's that email from the adjuster? Oh, no, that was just a phone call. You didn't confirm it? No. Okay? If, it, if it's not in writing, it didn't happen. Phone calls don't count. Okay? If you, if you call the insurance company, they're going to write it down. And they're going to tell a different story. Document your file. Tina's group has the most documented PA files I have ever seen in my life. I have never seen anything like what they do. It is phenomenal. Okay? And I mean, I've seen them all over the country. They are the standard by which others are measured. Okay? So pay her to find out what she's doing. Was, is that what you wanted? You wanted to pay, pay for it, right? Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, then you have to protect the property from further damage. Those who are reading this sharply will miss it. See the two and three aren't here. Those relate to theft claims. We're not talking about those. Okay. Make reasonable and necessary repairs and keep an accurate record. Okay. If you don't have an adjuster assigned and the roof needs to be tarped, talk to the agent. Okay. Dear Sam, just confirming uh, on behalf of... Uh, you know, three sevens insurance company, you told me to go ahead and tarp the roof, I'm gonna take care of it, okay? Confirm this stuff, because the adjuster will say, oh, we didn't tell you to do that. If it isn't in writing, it didn't happen. Confirm everything. Confirm, we, I just call to confirm, we couldn't meet today, uh, we've agreed to meet next Tuesday. Show the narrative, okay? Adjusters are usually they're all overworked. They're overwhelmed. They're being asked to make decisions they're not equipped to make, okay, or they're uncomfortable. Um, if you put too much pressure on them, they start ghosting you, uh, or they'll deny that a conversation or event took place. Send them an email. It's easier for them to document their file, okay? Document the good, the bad, and the ugly, but document it. If it isn't in writing, it didn't happen. Okay, what else do you have? You have to cooperate with the insurance company. What's cooperation mean? Well, it depends. There's no simple answer. Generally speaking, okay, reasonable cooperation is based on the circumstances that exist at the time that cooperation is requested. Okay, if there is a concern about the damage to a roof and the insurance company is asking for three years of tax returns and bank statements, why? Is that reasonable under the circumstances? Okay, do you have to do that? I would not simply refuse, but I would say, why do you want these? Okay, there's no financial issues that we know of. Okay, then you have to prepare an inventory of damaged personal property. The job I hated the most when I was an adjuster. Um, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, again, don't get crazy here. An ISO policy does not require the insured to exhibit the damaged and undamaged property. Many policies do. So be sure you know what you have to do. If that's the case, confirm in writing that the claim rep has seen everything and you can start the disposal process. State Farm also says that a policyholder has to, quote, give statements, okay? How many statements does that mean? And to whom? And how often? Again, it's a question of what's reasonable. Duties in the event of loss, send to us within 60 days after our request your signed sworn proof of loss. A lot of disagreement about this. Um, you, if the insurance company asks for it, you have to send it, okay? If you don't, the claim will be denied, and I don't think I'm going to be able to help you or your policyholder. But here's what we recommend to many people in the claims we deal with. 
send a proof of loss even if it's not requested. Why? It starts triggering a countdown for payment. Okay? Secondly, it tolls the lawsuit period. Okay? Most policies today say if you're going to file a lawsuit, you have to do it within one year or two years of the date of loss. But it's tolled while they're holding the proof of loss. So that can be expended, extended. If they reject it, that's fine, but get the, get the proof of loss into them. It'll push them to get the claim settled. Okay? Don't argue with them. If you send in your proof of loss and they reject it, you know where you are. You're not going to get them to change their mind because at that point it's gone through two or three levels of supervisors, okay, and they're not going to change their minds. Okay? They, 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 they can't, they, they'll lose too much face. All right? They'll start being called easy money. If you get a letter from the policy, from the insurance company saying, the insured has to show up for examination, of under, examination under oath, call the insurance company and ask them why. Second of all, call an attorney. It's time to get the attorney involved. You had a question. No. Now, if they're, they're in a situation where they didn't even realize that they had a leak until they walked into a room that's unused and they know that there's damages in that room, um, if they did a discovery, would that, how would you put it on proof of loss as, as they did a discovery or a, yeah, I mean, there's no investigation yet to see when. What's the source of the water? Uh, say when damages. Well, I think then you, the, the question is uh, somebody's got a room they don't use in the house. Okay, they haven't been in there in three or four months or more. One day they go into that room and there's a big water stain on the ceiling. They discover water damage. They're standing on the walls, blah, 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 blah. What do you put down for a date of loss? The date of discovery or do you try to relate it back to a windstorm? Um, if you're going to go with the date of discovery, that's what you want to indicate when it says date of loss, in parentheses, date of discovery. Okay? Now, one of the things I say, you've got to know what the policy says. Some policies say if the water's been leaking for a period of 14 days or more, we ain't paying this. Okay? I'm not telling anybody to lie. Okay? But don't walk into an exclusion. All right? Don't walk into an exclusion if you don't have to because it's tough to back your way out of it, All right? Any other questions? Well, I, I'm going to wrap up here shortly. I've only got 14 more slides. Um, what's the case law say? The duties uh, universally held here in the Midwest, duties are more than a cooperation clause, um, which only requires reasonable assistance. These are policy terms, and you must perform the specific duties, okay? You must, or the claim can be denied. Sean might be able to get out of you, get you out of that then. I might not. Um, the insured insurer can waive these, okay? Do you want to come out and inspect this roof? No, I don't need to. Just go ahead and fix it. Send an email. They've waived their right to inspect, okay? No, go ahead and replace it. Confirm that with an email. They've waived their right, okay? Do you need X? No, I don't. Confirm that in an email. They may, not put, they may be running and not put it in the file. You need to put it in the file, okay? Here's a case from Illinois. It says the, the plaintiff did not file a proof of loss, but the insurer knew enough about the loss that there was really no need to do it, and he may have waived it. That, that issue was not taken up by the court. It was sent back down to the trial court for determination. Yes, sir? Real quick on those emails, if you don't get a response, that's still okay. They can send it to the second one, so don't always just look for a response email. Right, yeah, um, if they don't respond and you think there's a, re Bob, I sent you an email on Tuesday. I didn't hear back from you. Okay, um, if it's a really critical thing, 
all right, and it's a lot of money involved, I might do that, all right? Um, a lot of people start ghosting in this business and all. It's common in society now. And if someone starts ghosting you, I sent you an email, I didn't hear from you. If we don't hear from you by Tuesday, we're going to presume that what we propose is okay with you, all right? Take care of it yourself. But don't, I wouldn't just leave it open. Um, if you haven't filed a proof and they deny the claim, universally they've waived the right um, or waived the requirement to file a proof of loss. My, the research and my experiences as an attorney are primarily in the upper Midwest, okay? You guys are from all over. I, can, I know some of you are in shorts. We don't wear shorts today. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's okay, but we don't do that. Um, some of you say y'all, which we don't hear a lot around here, and that's fine. When you get home, okay, when you get home, say, this idiot from Chicago said we got to do X, Y, and Z. What's the law here? Talk to your attorney. If you don't have an attorney on speed dial, get one, okay? Make it a two-way street. You can provide him with information. He can pro she can provide you with information, okay? Make, get a team, all right? I, I have, I got a roofer I can call, I got a plumber I can call, I got an electrician I can call, I got contractors I can call. I got all kinds of clients, okay, and friends that I've kept over the years. I need information about something, I call them, and I buy them lunch sometime. But, okay, make a team. You can't do this yourself. You can't, you can't know enough to do this all yourself. Um, we talked about the tolling provision. Here's what the policy says in, in, in the insurer's obligations, okay? We will pay for covered loss of damage 30 days after we receive the proof of loss and there's been the filing of an appraisal award or we reach an agreement, okay? But once you do that and there's an agreement, even on a partial loss, they have to pay you within 30 days. If they don't, that's some traction to start twisting their arm. Okay, get that proof of loss in. It doesn't say the proof of loss we requested. It says proof of loss. Um, summary, we've talked, this hasn't been that long. Um, the insured doesn't know what they're doing, okay? The policy identifies who they are, but you have to help them, okay? Um, our job, I think you have duties under the law of your state, okay, to be, once you agree to represent them as a policyholder uh, representative, as a PA or otherwise, you have a duty to help them get paid fairly and promptly. Don't get in the way of that happening. The biggest fights I've seen in claim files result from the insured or the insurer's representative and the policyholder getting in a fight. They don't like each other, okay, and it spills over into the claim. Try not to let that happen. These adjusters, many of them are jerks, okay, but do not try to keep that from screwing things up for your client, okay, or, and keep you from getting paid. All right, thank you. Questions? Yes? It can be as powerful, but it's harder to find, it's harder to prove. Um, it's harder from an evidentiary standpoint, okay? Because you, you have to go back and find it on your phone and you may have a new phone, whereas emails tend to stick. But if you do find it, you got a record, you got a record. It's better than nothing, yeah. It's better than nothing, but I prefer an email and I think every attorney here would prefer an email. It's, it's stronger proof. Yes? Uh-huh. Uh, you don't have to sign it. Okay. All right. If you, or you say under dispute, okay. You, you, if you don't, if they're telling you they think the damage is 30 grand and you think it's 40, if you sign a proof of loss saying it's 30, guess how much it is? It's 30. Okay. Questions? No? All right. Thank you very much. <laughs>